In this lesson, we're going to go through 10 examples working with the properties of exponents. So you might want to pause the video and try to do some of these problems on your own and we'll go through them together. So we're going to be working with all these properties right here and I'll talk about these as we go through. So let's take a look at the first example. How would you simplify this? 4 to the negative 2 power. Well, the key thing is you want to have positive exponents in your final answer. So when you see a negative exponent, that's going to be this rule right here. It tells us to take the reciprocal. Okay, this is the base, this is the exponent, the negative. You take the reciprocal, or the way I like to think about it is you move that quantity to the other side of the fraction bar and you make it a positive exponent. So if it's in the denominator, you're going to move it to the numerator. If it's in the numerator, you're going to move it to the denominator. So it just changes sides. So this would look like this. It'll be 1 over 4 to the positive 2. Now, if this was 4 to the 10th power, I'd have to use a calculator probably or, you know, take my time and figure out what that is. Oftentimes, teachers will just say leave it like that. But if it's something smaller that you can simplify, I would try to simplify it. So 4 squared is just 4 times 4, see 4 twice, which is equal to 16. So this is just going to simplify to 1 over 16. So you want to try to simplify it as much as possible. For number 2 now, what do you think on this one? We've got 3 to the 0 times x to the 3rd, all divided by y to the negative 2. How would you rewrite that or simplify that expression? Well, if I was going to do it, anything to the 0 power is equal to 1. That's this property right here. So 3 to the 0 is going to be 1. x cubed is just x cubed. y to the negative 2, remember when you have that negative exponent, that tells us to take the reciprocal or you can move it to the other side of the fraction bar and make it a positive exponent, which really just leaves us with a 1 down here because this is like 1 times y to the negative 2. Now, 1 times anything is itself, anything divided by 1 is itself, so this just condenses down to x cubed times y squared. That's as far as we can go. Notice all the exponents are positive. For number 3 now, what do you think on this one? We've got the quantity 5x squared to the third power times y to the 0, all divided by 5x to the negative 3 times y to the fourth. That's a lot going on, right? Well, right away I can see y to the 0 that's equal to 1, because again, anything to the 0 power is 1. Here what we have is we have this monomial, meaning, mono meaning 1, okay, as opposed to a binomial, there's a plus or minus sign in between the two terms. So this is what's called a product to a power. That's going to be this property right here. So when you have a product, these quantities multiply together to a power, what you do is you apply that power to all these uh, quantities inside the parentheses. So power to power, you multiply the exponents, if you don't see an exponent, it's understood to be a 1. So this is like 3 times 1, which is 3. So 5 cubed, 2 times 3 is 6. You don't want to make the mistake and add them. Power to power, you multiply. Don't want to confuse it with this one. When you have the same base and you're multiplying, you add the exponents. Okay. So now in the denominator, we've got 5, x to the negative third, y to the fourth. So you don't have to do uh, too many steps at once. Maybe just do one or two at a time. And so now I can see that uh, this is a 1, anything to the first power is itself, but when I divide and I have the same base, what do I do to the exponents? That's this property right here. When I divide, I subtract. Make sure you take the numerator's power minus the denominator, and the answer will go in the numerator. So 3 minus 1 is 2. That's going to be 5 squared okay, in the numerator. Uh, another way to think about it is one of these 5s cancels with one of these, leaving 2 left over. Okay. Again, here we're dividing, we have the same base, x, so we subtract. 6 minus negative 3 is like 6 plus 3, that's going to be x to the ninth. Again, notice the answer is in the numerator. Another way to do it is if you have a negative exponent, we could bring this up here. If you're, they're multiplied now together, you would add the exponent, so 6 plus 3 would be 9. Remember when you change sides of the fraction bar, this changes from negative to positive. And then we still have this y to the fourth in the denominator. 5 squared we know is 5 times 5, so that's 25. And then that's as far as we can go. We really can't combine these because they're different variables, x and y. So we've simplified that one. Okay, for number four, what do you think for this one? A negative 2 to the fourth times x cubed to the second all over x to the negative 1. How would you simplify that one? Now, oftentimes students make a mistake here because they say, well, Mario, negative uh, 2 four times, that would be a positive 16, right? But the negative 2 is not in parentheses, so that means we have to follow the order of operations. We have to do exponents 
before multiplying by this negative 1 here. So 2 to the 4th is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, 2 4 times, that's 16. Then times the negative will give us negative 16. Power to power we multiply, so 3 times 2 is x to the 6th. And then in the denominator we have x to the negative 1. Notice that these have the same base. We're dividing, so we subtract the exponents. That's this property right here, quotient property. When you divide, you subtract. 6 minus negative 1 is like... 6 plus 1, and remember when you do the quotient property, the answer always goes in the numerator. Now if you ended up with a negative 7, then on the next step I would then move it to the denominator because that negative exponent tells us to take the reciprocal. Just be careful when there's a lot of negatives. You might even want to do the work off to the side, like 6 minus negative 1. Subtraction is like adding the opposite. Okay, that's how I got the 7. Let me erase the whiteboard. We're going to do 10 examples, so we've got six more to go. Okay, see if you can do number five now. We've got x squared, y cubed, z to the fifth, all over x to the fourth, y to the second, z to the twelfth. How would you do that one? Well, what I can do is I can kind of think of it as like three problems together. I've got x's, y's, and z's, and when I divide, that's the quotient property right here. I have to subtract the exponents. Numerator's power minus denominator's power. So we've got 2 minus 4, which is negative 2. 3 minus 2, which is 1, 5 minus 12, which is negative 7. Now, again, student, students sometimes make a mistake. They don't know where to put the answer. The answer always goes in the numerator. You just take the numerator minus the denominator, the answer goes in the top. But if we have negative exponents like we do for these two, we're going to have to take the reciprocal, which is like moving it to the other side of the fraction, and then you change it from a negative exponent to a positive exponent. And that's your final answer. Okay, let's look at number six now. We've got the quantity 3x to the negative fourth. How would you do that one? Try that one. You can do this a couple different ways. We've got a product to a power. Okay, that's this right here. And if you don't see an exponent, think of those as like ones. Power to power, you multiply. So this is going to be 3 to the negative 4, x to the negative 4. We don't want negative exponents. That's going to tell us to move it to the other side of the fraction here. So this is going to become... 1 over 3 to the 4th, x to the 4th. Of course, 3 to the 4th is 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, 4 times, that's 81, and that's your final answer. Now, I told you there's another way to do it. You could think of this as like 3x over 1. This negative here tells you to flip the base. This is the base here, this is the exponent. You take the reciprocal of the base, which would make it 1 over 3x to the 4th, and then that's this property here. We have a fraction to a power. You apply that power to the numerator and the denominator. 1 to the 4th is just going to be 1 times 1 times 1 times 1, which is 1. 3 to the 4th is going to be 81, and x to the 4th is x to the 4th. So a different way to look at it. For number 7 now, try this one. 2y divided by 3 all to the negative third power. How would you do that one? Well, if it was me, I would probably look at that negative and say, okay, take the reciprocal of the base. So that's 3 over 2y, and we're going to raise it to the positive third power. Once you take the reciprocal, that negative changes to positive. We're back to this property here. We have a fraction to a power. You apply that power to the numerator and denominator, so it's going to go like this, this, and this. So it's going to be 3 cubed, 2 cubed, y cubed. 3 cubed is 3 times 3 times 3, the 3 times. 2 cubed is 2 times 2 times 2, that's 8, y cubed. That's our final answer. Again, remember, if a quantity doesn't have an exponent, it's understood to be a 1. So if you want, you could put 1s wherever there's not any exponents, and then think power to a power. It's this property here. You multiply the exponents. Okay, go ahead and try number 8. What do you think for this one? A negative 1 over y squared to the 4th. What do you think? How would you do that one? Now, here's the way I look at it. See this negative here? If you have a negative 4 times, Negative times negative times negative times negative. That's going to be a positive. And so if it was a negative to an odd power, that would be a negative. So you just remember, if it's an odd power, negative, even power, positive, 1 to any power is going to be 1. 2 times 4 is 8. So this is just going to be 1 over y to the 8th. Now, I've got two more problems I want to show you. They're important to understand. But before I do that, if you like the way that I'm explaining things and you want to learn more with me, I encourage you to take my math courses. And I have those math courses over on my Mars Math Tutor YouTube channel membership section. So I've got my Algebra 1, my College Algebra or Algebra 2 course, my Geometry Pre-Calculus course, 
And I've got midterm and final exam reviews there and more videos as well. So there's almost 400 videos there, additional videos, if you sign up at that additional videos level. So check that out if you want to kind of go through a math course with me step by step. Let me erase the whiteboard. Let's do those last two questions. Okay, what do you think about number nine here? How would you simplify this one? Well, if I was going to do it, I can see that I've got this product to a power. So remember, this is a one here. Power to a power, we multiply. So that's going to be one times two, which is two. So this is two squared. Three times two is six. Over here, same thing, product to a power. So power to power, we multiply. So that's going to be two to the twelfth, x to the negative eighth. And then when you have the same base and you're multiplying, you add the exponents. That's this property here. And so we've got 2 plus 12, which is 14, and 6 plus negative 8 is negative 2. Now, we don't want to have a negative exponent, so what we do is we move it to the other side of the fraction bar and we change the sign. So this is 2 to the 14th over x squared. Now, you can simplify the 2 to the 14th if you want. That's kind of a large one, so I'm just going to leave it like that for right now. For number 10, last problem, how would you do this one? We've got 5x squared y cubed to the 0 power divided by negative x cubed y to the negative fourth to the third power. Okay, a lot going on there. But notice this whole quantity is raised to the 0 power. Remember, anything to the 0 is 1. This whole thing is in parentheses. It's to the 0. That's just going to be 1. Now, in the denominator, we've got a negative 3 times. A negative times a negative times a negative. That's going to be a negative. Okay, if this was an even power, it would be positive. Power to power, we multiply, so that's going to be x to the ninth. Negative 4 times 3, that's going to be y to the negative 12th. We don't want that negative exponent, so we're going to move this quantity. Now, some students make the mistake of moving the whole thing. This negative 12 is just affecting the y. We're just going to move that part to the numerator and make it y to the positive 12th over negative x to the ninth. Now, it doesn't matter if you put the negative here or here or off to the side. But you don't want to make these both negative because then they would cancel and give you a positive. So great job if you're able to follow all these examples. I'll put a video right there where I talk uh, more about working with uh, exponents. If you want some more practice, you can pause the video and try some of those problems right there. So follow me to that video. We'll get some more practice. I'll see you there.